one, and we are live with Mr. Mr. Ian Lincoln. Ian, how are you? I'm good, thanks, Rob. Yeah, no, no, I'm good, good. How about you? I'm good. I, I got up obscenely early, uh, so I'm coming off this valley, as, as you know, and um, getting all this excess, excess energy, and we've gone on runs, and I've gone on more than one run with a dog already, and it's, 11, it's one o'clock here. So. Yeah, I'm uh, trying to make the most of lockdown. So, um, Ian, you... Correct me if I'm wrong. You studied mechanical engineering at Leeds University. Correct. Um, and in Singapore as well, you studied. Yep. And then you recently, fairly recently, were forced to meditate for 16 hours a day, was it? Um, probably nearer to 12 hours a day, but yeah, a, a, long, a, day. A, a long time. For a week? Um, 10 days of solid meditation. Oh. Um, yeah, 10 days, wow. pretty much. What happened, I want to know, like, from your eyes, what, you arrived there, what's it like? So, the retreat that I went to, it's, um, it's down in Herefordshire in the UK. Um, it's actually yeah. a really, really beautiful spot, really nice centre there, actually. Um, so, so, kind of the first day, you turn up in the afternoon and you kind of line up, you know, waiting to register with all the other kind of lambs to the slaughter, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, kind of just fill in the, the usual sort of forms of, you know, are you happy to submit to, you know, 10 days of meditation? Um, they're, they're quite um, they're, they're, they're quite, they're quite strict in, in the sense that, I mean, obviously you can leave, but they're, um, you know, obviously they're very keen for you not to leave because, um, yeah, it, it, you, you're kind of losing a place for someone else. So I think, I think um, yeah, you kind of, uh, the, the, when you when you first get there they're, they're kind of yeah it's kind of a basically hammering through are you sure you want to do this right, right. you know a bit of a background kind of thing you know of your um, mental back mental health background um just a bit about you really you have to sort of fill in a, sort oh, wow. of a, a, a short a short biography i think is essentially they they sit down with you before it starts because you, you it, yeah. the, the yeah. whole the, the retreat itself is 12 days um but so the first day and the last day is kind of like a, a decompression day at the end and then a sort of registration kind of update you type thing. So, um, so yeah, it was just... Sort like of, the army. Sorry. Like what? the army. Yeah. Like it, service it, in the army. It, 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 yeah, it, it, did, it did feel like a little bit like that. It was kind of conscription, conscription saying you will, you will serve 10 days um, kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, it was... Yeah, you basically fill in the forms and give up all your phone and wallet and all your kind of possessions effectively um put them in a the locker I didn't know any sorry rob could you repeat that i didn't know any of this I, it, it was a redundant comment please carry on okay so <laughs> um yeah so you yeah you basically submit all your your worldly possessions and whatnot i mean obviously you keep your you know your clothes and your stuff that you've taken for you know your basic needs but um yeah you give up your phone and and wallet and keys and all that sort of stuff and they show you to your room and you briefly meet the people that you're going to be living with um i say briefly i mean it's it's a very short introduction and then i think at six o'clock the bell rings and effectively from that moment on you are sort of sworn to silence no communication of any sort um you have to sort of follow the five precepts that they have kind of abstain from killing which is you know animals food you know so vegetarian vegan food um no stealing sexual misconduct um lying um no intoxicants that kind of, that kind of thing sort of you right. know, kind of agree to for that and the, the vow of silence is another thing that you you kind of agree to um so yeah as i say on that on that sort of bell it kind of yeah it starts and um yeah the, the hard work begins do they divide the, the dorms by gender yes yeah so when you turn up it's kind of everyone sort of mingling together on the first day but then once the meditation retreat officially starts if you like the main the main room they put a um like a, a wall across so that the men the male and the females eat separately you can't see each other um the main meditation hall is is mixed but you're on different sides so there's there's very much a, a male female segregation and obviously you only live with um you know the male dorms and the female dorms are separate um so yeah that's how that would be useful because like 
temptation is is what gets in the way of um of peace and taking your phone off you as soon as you walk in the door and then split uh, doing a, a gender divide uh, um is quite a good idea but at the same time it's almost like you can be enlightened but only if you give us your phone you don't see any women for uh, 10 days well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it does feel a little bit. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. As you say, the, the, I think that's the idea. You know, the lack of distractions. You can focus on the practice. But um, yeah, in some ways, it's it's a little bit kind of. I don't know. It feels like a some sort of prisoner of war camp, kind of. You know, schoolyard. I don't know. You know, it's it's. it's Quite right. uh, and you were. Uh... Prisoner of war camp in your white robes. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> well, um, yeah. I mean, you said you said you don't have to wear the, uh, yeah, wear any kind of uniform, thankfully. But um, yeah, it's certainly, yeah, it, it's very much, it, it's, it does kind of feel a little bit. I mean, it's probably a bit unfair to say, but a little, a little bit like prison in some ways. You know, it's in a psychological perspective, you kind of, um, you are isolated. You know, it's sort of solitary confinement yeah, to the yeah. mind in a way. You can't communicate with anyone at all. Um, and it, yeah, you're, walking yeah. around, you're walking around and you're with all these people, um, but you can't talk to them. You you kind of accidentally maybe catch a glance of someone and then you like, uh, you know, kind of, you know, obviously you, you any sort practice. of communication. you got a bit of practicing for the, the social distancing pandemic world, it sounds like. <laughs> well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's a walk in a park, really, when, yeah, compared to, <laughs> compared to this. I mean, too, I suppose, yeah, it's um, it's... Yeah, it's. It, I mean, for a lot of people, I mean, I, I'm quite introverted, I guess. So for me, that wasn't as hard as I think for a lot of people. That sort of social isolation, um, you know. Mechanical it's, engineer. Uh, in, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But but not not to. But it certainly wasn't easy. I'm not I'm not painting it out as that. You know, not speaking. You know, I do like. You know, I think humans need that interaction, and you know you know starving yourself of that for 10 days is yeah it's you know it's it's a, it's a yeah it's a difficult thing to do but um do you think that um being, being with a lot of people for 10 days but you're forbidden to speak to them is that is that harder in a way than being 10, 10 days on your own or well i i i think there's there's sort of a group there is kind of everyone's in it together a little bit although you're not communicating with them in any way there is a sort of for me, there was a sense of, you know, group, you know, everyone's sort of, you know, everyone's in it together. We're all kind of, you know, everyone has, everyone's going through their own experience and it's very unique for everyone. But at the same time, you're doing the same thing. You're all succumb to the same rules. So I think it's probably easier than being on your own. I think that would be even more, that would be harder. The, 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 there were some people that used to, that did meditate in cells. So they were kind of, you know, probably more isolated but in the main hall there's about 120 people and I think that sort of group that group meditation I think in some ways makes it easier I wouldn't say not easy but I think it helps I was picturing less than 120 for some reason so so was it kind of desexualized or something so everyone was in these white robes that covered everything no, there was no, there was no, there's no robes. I know some places, I don't know whether, so I, I the, the, the retreat I attended was um, sort of a Vipassana um, retreat as taught by Goenka. Um, now, I don't, is that, that's the poly term for mindfulness, right? It's, it's the, it's the, I guess it's the, 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 the technique of meditation, which they teach there. Um, but it is my Vipassana means mindfulness. Is that right? Yeah. Oh well, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's it's yeah. It's definitely yeah. Mindful meditation. Um, but um, there's there's no robes. There's no. It's not. There's no. It's not religious in any way. It's sort of very secular. Um, although they right. discourage right. practicing any religious, you know, rituals and whatnot during the retreat. You know, it's not. You know, it's not just for Buddhists, for example. The the practice is you know based on sort of Buddhist kind of the buddhist practices i understand but it's um it's not a you know it's it's but they're very explicit to say that it's very secular um do you see it as a bit a bit a bit culty or did you see every did everything you see there rather than a cult you saw as um necessary restraints to, to get the most out of the experience it's an interesting question uh, i 
there was a little bit, I, generally speaking, I think the latter, I think it was really more of a, a necessity for the practice. Um, yeah, but yeah. The, there was instances where it did feel a little bit cultish, if you like, you know, the, you know, the sort of the, the cult of Glencore in some ways, although I, I don't, I, I, I don't think there's, you know, I certainly don't think there's any ulterior motives. I think it's genuinely, you know, uh, you know, promoting a, a really useful practice for everyone. But, you know, I suppose it, you know, some people, some people suggest that, it, you know, maybe it's got that sort of feel to it. But no, I don't, I don't, for me, no, I think it was more, more a necessity really to, you know, really to, it's really just to focus, say so you're 100% focus on, you know, on the the task in hand, which is just you know, kind of, you know, uh, uh, going through the mind really. You know, ten days of just yeah, like surgery. So you said you said that. Um, can you hear that echo? By the way, um, I I I, I, can, I I can't. It could. Do you want me to try some? Put some headphones on. Yeah, please. Yeah, that'd be yeah. Good. Just set. While Ian does that, I'll um, I'll say a limerick. It was yeah. early last September. As far as I remember, I was walking down the street in drunken pride when I fell into the gutter, thinking thoughts I dare not utter. When a fair young, when a pig came and laid down by my side, and then as I lay there in the gutter, thinking thoughts I dare not utter, a fair maiden came to me and she did say, "You can tell a man who boozes from the company he chooses." And with that, the pig got up. And walked away. Uh, yeah, I'm. I, I miss can you. Hear me I, now? I, I can. I can hear. I can hear you well now. You. Is that better? Cool. Yeah. yeah, man. yeah. Just, uh, by the uh, way, put... people watch. People watching. When you put a Skype video, or it seems when you put a Skype video on YouTube, it shrinks it from like I say, twelve by ten frame to a, a ten by eight frame. So, if if I look disproportionately close to the camera, or bigger than Ian, or disproportionately to the side, it, it's it's not my fault. And I didn't bring my camera down to where I'm staying in the countryside and um, sold my soul and got a, got a selfie stick. So you said, you said on the first day of the retreat, the hard work begins. What, did, what was so hard about it? Well, I think for, for me, I think physically, um, just because I, I'd done a little bit of meditation in the past, but not a lot. You know, I'd, you know bit of the meditation apps you know headspace waking up that type of thing but I'd never really sort of dedicated much time to it you know 15 minutes here or there you know sat on a chair I think that's very different to sort of 10 12 hours of sitting on the floor because they they insist, you can't you can't sit on a chair you you must you know what part part of the 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 process is you you seated on the floor um and that, that and alone sat cross-legged for so long, you know, for for an hour or two at a time. You know, it's, you know, I, 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 the amount of postures and positions to try and just to try and settle and try and, you know, overcome that physical that physical discomfort was, I think for me probably the biggest challenge. I mean, after sort of five or six days, I think eventually I kind of got into a, you know, into a yeah into a, a position where I could kind of you know look past the the discomfort and sort of focus more on the mind, but um that that for me was probably the hardest i would say um a lot of people kind of you you can request a share but they generally don't like to give you one there was a handful of people who were generally a little bit older that that were were given shares after requesting them but um you know i i, I certainly certainly didn't get one and um yeah um yeah i think they, they kind of generally discourage that i think i think that's part of the process yeah, yeah. Really. did you have to sit cross-legged or could you sit sort of on your knees as some people do with like a cushion on the lap or whatever yeah 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 no you you you, you can any any position yeah i mean i I tried all of those you know cross-legged with a tried a bench you know had like a mountain of cushions trying to kneel kneel and basically trying to kind of stand up but on my knees if you like you know i, I tried every every conceivable seated position you could find the, the only position they don't like is pe pointing your feet towards the front of the hall um if this the, that's disrespectful to the teacher um so as long as you're not doing that um and you're, you're basically on the floor then you know any position is you know kind of kind of goes really um but um, they, they 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 do they do you kind of request a backrest as well. I didn't do that. I sort of tried to kind of keep it as, you know, 
as, as basic oh, yeah. as possible. Um, but a handful of people did get those, which sort of, I think, makes it a little bit easier. But, you know, again, certainly not easy. He's still on the floor. But so what, made, um, what made you... You didn't make, you've got a, quite a, a, a prestigious role in mechanical engineering. What makes you want to go and, and be forced to sit in science for 10 days all day by, by, by people? What, what drove you there? Well, I, I suppose, I, I've, well, I've always been relatively, I guess, I suppose open-minded. I mean, I'm not, I'm not kind of religious or anything like that, but I think, you know, having sort of dabbled in a little bit of meditation and sort of, you know, kind of being more aware of, you know, the impact you sort of the mind has on everything, of course. Um, it, it, it was just more, it, the, the opportunity arose and it was kind of just a bit, it was a bit of a, it wasn't something that I planned to do. You know, it was more of a just like, let, like let's just try this. Let's just see, see if, you know, see if I can kind of, you know, kind of sort of, you know, make some progress, right. calm my mind, you know, and as I say, it was, it was a little bit of a, you know, it was a little bit of a, just a, a jump in, you know, it was very, quite a last minute thing for me. I hadn't, as I say, it wasn't something that I've thought about for years doing. It was just this opportunity arose. And I think once I'd committed to it, I'd almost, I'm quite a stubborn personality in a lot of ways. And once I told people I was doing it, I was kind of like, well, I, I have to do this and I can't drop out, you know, and it was more just, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was the fact that I'd committed to it and, you know, I wanted to see it through. And, um, yeah, it was, I mean, abs absolutely one of the, one of the most difficult, but most rewarding experiences I would, I would, I've ever had. Um, I don't think it's for everyone. I think the most satisfying and rewarding experiences I've ever easily uh, I find. Do you know what I mean? Uh, well, like, I mean, Watching YouTube for 12 hours a day um, is really easy and, you, and I sort of want to do it, but I would feel just disgusted in, in my soul if I did that all day. Do you know what I mean? Whereas yeah, yeah. plugging away at things that are difficult to do and you've got some inner resistance to do, um, by the end of the day, leaves you feeling better because you've sort of climbed the mountain. It's like what Albert Camus says in The Myth, the myth of Sisyphus about um, cause Sisyphus in the Greek legend was condemned to um roll he saw some things from the gods and he, he was condemned he, or he did something to piss them off and he he, was, he had to roll that huge boulder up the hill only to at the end of the day watch it roll down again and he'd go the next day roll it really heavy crushingly heavy and alpha camus said the best you could offer your best you could hope for in life is um is that moment where you what you stood watching the, the stone roll roll down for a bit you're like ah You've always got to get up and do it all over again. Any, no, any person, no matter how successful they are, how brilliant they are, they've always got to get up and do it better, do it more, keep it going. You know what I mean? I can't rest, uh, rest on you. And what you were saying about the, the, brutal, the, the, the brutal way, the brutal nature of, of, that, of the retreat, there's a certain brutality to it. My friend, a former friend actually now, but <laughs> trained with a 46th generation original Shaolin monk. And um, this guy... Like when he gets into something, he was reading a Graham Hancock book, it came across the line and went to the country to go and look at the thing. To, to he really gets rid of stuff with this with this Charlie Monk, and he's from like a year and a half. And they are just the elite of elite in terms of fighting. I, I, know, people, I know people would maybe right rightly disagree; they wouldn't stand a chance against a heavyweight UFC fighter, but I, I think they probably would. Anyway, he he was saying ninety eight percent of it was just brutal conditioning training. And, mm. um, but with that compassion thrown in, you, know, you don't have to. But I want you to try, to try and do the splits for two hours. And he'd make the first thing you do, he'd blindfold them. They, go, they all go expecting, like, we're going to learn the magic of Shao, Shaolin Kung Fu. And he blindfolds them and makes them walk around the room for an hour. And they're all falling over. And, and, over. and he's like, all right, go home. And, but, but then the, on the, by the third day, their mind and their body are aligned to the point where they're not falling over anymore. And they train in the dark, and then you can fight in the dark and, um, and, and stuff like that. So, so it, it sounds a bit like what you went through in that, in that most of it was, sounds quite uncomfortable and brutal. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it, it is all of that. It's, it's the whole experience, you know, it's, it's, 
there's a, there's boredom you know you're you, you know there's you know it's just there's all, all all sorts of all sorts of emotions go through you it's there's is a, there's a lot of hard work and i mean for me for me i, I feel like you know i'm i mean i've just done a 10 day meditation retreat you know i'm far from a, you know any kind of um any kind of i'm not far from enlightened or anything like that but i feel like you know i've moved 1% to you know that hard work you know has given me a window into I think what what meditation can bring you know in terms of um you know kind of mental peace if you like I don't know it seems a bit cliche but so I think of it you know another term for it but you know I think you know it's incremental it's change as you say it's a lot of hard work incrementally moving forward and you know it is it is hard work you know absolutely you know it's never you know it's not, nothing exactly nothing worth having is easy so um yeah, but the, yeah, the whole the whole thing is yeah, as you say, it's just a, it, it is it is it is sort of quite quite brutal in some respects. But you know, you you don't you don't get anything worthwhile from a you know you're not going to meditate for ten minutes and all of a sudden be some kind of enlightened Buddha. You know, it takes a lifetime of just hard work and you know perseverance and you know hopefully. Well, um, perseverance is a better word for it because hard work. Is- because the, the, the Buddha, original Buddha, or uh, Siddhartha, or whatever his name was supposed to have been, said, basically, when he realized it was, he didn't have to try, it was all play, and it, 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 it just, he relaxed into life and, and, and became friendly with the present moment, whatever it was. And he, he stopped, he stopped, because he was working so hard at it, like eating a berry a day, and just being under the tree, right, right I've got, I really got to try and get enlightened now, do you know what I mean? It's, it's focusing. And then one day, he just, something, something, something uh illuminated and um that's why it's that picture of him just before he died he's just laid there smiling because he doesn't mind what happened um, well, it's, kind of um but but 10 minutes a day is a, a lot 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 better than no minutes a day oh no no yeah i mean i'm not you know i'm not you know i'm not certainly saying that you know 10 minutes a day is yeah it's it's yeah any meditation 30 seconds meditation a day is better than no meditation but um yeah, it's. I suppose. Yeah, I'm, I guess. I guess what I was saying is that was my prior prior experience, and going from that to doing twelve hours a day was, you know, it was certainly a, you know, it was eye opening. But um, but yeah, I mean, going back to your previous point, you know, it's um, I suppose it's yeah, it's the, you know, it's just about um, it, it's yeah, that the kind of the cravings and the aversions, I suppose, and that's what you're. You know, you, you, right. you t- trying to be trying to trying to not be judgmental on either of those, you know, trying to, you know, because that's, I suppose, in the, I think the, I think it's the Buddhist sense that that's the the source of source of, you know, unhappiness or whatever. Um, what, do you mean, what do you mean by craving? Yeah. What do you mean by what do you mean by craving and what do you mean by aversion? Well, I, I suppose trying to, you know, if you, you know, if you I mean, if you really want something, you know, like, do I want that new that new i don't know that new new car or something or you know in my life's gonna be better wants to do this or do that and you know and that right. rather than rather than sort of you know not not trying to sort of you obviously want to strive to improve yourself whatever but rather than sort of you know see those kind of um you know that uh, i don't I'm, I'm kind of not really explaining it very well i guess but um yeah i suppose you are <laughs> people often yeah. do that they're doing that they're doing a good job of something and then they say oh, i'm sorry i'm not really doing a good job of it and and then they're not but um you were doing you were doing wonderful oh it's, it's too kind but um yeah no i i think it's just it's just been equanimous equanimous as he is going to say in his discourses regularly it's just you know non-judgmental you know it is what it is you know that's that's kind of the essence of it really you know it's it's if you can really come to that 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 place in life you know and that's it's it, in theory it's easy you know it's easy to say that it's easy to sort of, yeah, yeah exactly that's exactly it you know the, the the principles sound easy you know you know the technique and whatever it's 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 easy but it's not you know it's very difficult and you know and actually to really get that breakthrough is um yeah can take well it does take years i imagine you know as i say i mean i'm probably on the on the level i'm probably like i've moved from zero to one out of a hundred you know that's kind of where i feel like i am i'm certainly better than i was but i'm i've got so much work to do you know it's but it's just the beginning of a, a long path 
be a, be a bit more compassionate to yourself, like three or four out of a hundred. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. It's um, as I say, it's 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 a lot. It's you know, it's a lifetimes lifetimes thing, isn't it? Really, you know, you, you, nothing, nothing. You know, there's no such thing as a quick fix. That's that's certainly true, unless you're um, masturbating in your twenties. <laughs> What's your most striking memory of the experience? Not masturbating in your twenties, but the retreat. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I don't think anyone wants to hear about that. Um, yeah, I suppose. Well, I, I suppose it was kind of a, the, springs to mind. It was there was. I suppose there's a couple, a couple of, couple of incidents. I suppose there was. There was one quite. It was quite funny, really. I guess on. I think it was on the eighth or ninth day of the retreat. Um, you've obviously got a hundred odd people you know, all kind of hyper-focused, been meditating all week, you know, everyone's just on a different, I kind of guess on a different level compared to where they were in yeah. terms of sort of, send, you know, the, the, the awareness and whatnot. And I just remember, uh, it, there was a guy, the guy just randomly, just a few places down, just started chuckling to himself, just all of a sudden, just almost felt uncontrollable. And then it stopped. And then every kind of 10 seconds or so, it kind of, like, it, it kind of came back. And then you could hear it, you could sense it spreading. This kind of, you know, they talk about laughter being infectious, and you know, it was, yeah. you know, it was just so. It was you could you could you could you could hear just like the the it just spreading out, just one person by one person, you know, it spread out, you know, by you know, thirty seconds later, there was four people just sort of trying to hold this kind of, you know, this this laughter that was gr gradually building up and building up, and then after, you know, it came in waves and waves, and then before you know it, the whole hall was in control but uncontrollably laughing and I, and I was when I first heard him I was like oh this is really awkward you know because it wasn't you know you think of it as like a just a load of school kids being told to you know go to some sort of assembly you know this was like you know this was like a load of adults that were committed to a you know a, a, a difficult practice so it wasn't someone who was like dicking about or anything yeah. um it was just sort of that uncontrollable kind of you know sensation or whatever that came to him and um yeah before you know it the whole the whole hall was laughing including me you know it was just it was weird you know you couldn't you couldn't stop it you know it was i think just because everyone was um that that's a misconception about meditation well the sobers in a way it's so much of a blanket term it doesn't it doesn't do all the nuances justice of, of what can be of what you can gain psychologically and even uh physically from it but the, but there's misconceptions that it's all serious and stern and monks with shaved heads and um bows and um you know getting beaten without feeling pain and all that but it's by enlightenment it's it's lightening up it's joy isn't it really uh, that's what you're going for yeah absolutely you know yeah i mean it's not yeah it's not about it's not about punishing yourself or torturing yourself you know it's about you know it's 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 yeah it's about i guess um yeah trying to trying to trying to learn more about yourself and you know try and you know understand yeah understand who you are i suppose um but yeah no i mean it was it was just i mean that 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 just stood out it was just this quite a you know um quite a quite a quite a funny you know moment but for, for me personally I mean, personally i had i had i don't know whether it was a breakthrough or not on i think it was maybe the fifth fifth day um so you do I think it was probably the fifth day. Um, it was after we started doing the periods of strong determination, which effectively you you aim to not move at all. So the meditation right. sits uh, one to two hours, and you know the you know obviously you're not moving around, walking around or anything. But the idea is that you sort of you know steady generally generally the same position. Halfway through the retreat or something, along, I think it's about halfway through. Um, they introduced I think three um one hour meditation sits a strong determination and right. they that that involves effectively not moving at not moving your posture at all so not trying to flinch move your mouth any anything of course you know there's no one sat there with a stick you know like enforcing it but it's uh, something that you should at least attempt to you know to to do um and i i, I do remember on that i think it was maybe the second session of strong determination just coming out of that and just having this um like a crazy sense of I think it was kind of like just euphoria maybe almost I don't know I don't know whether it was just the relief oh, wow. of just you know you know of the sit <laughs> you know or just just or just feeling <laughs> yeah <laughs> everyone leaves the treats feeling feeling overjoyed <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah it's, 
No, it just it was just um, I remember thinking, wow, have, have they put something in the food or something for lunch? You know, I, I remember I went, I went to the I went to, to, went to the showroom and looked at my eyes. I was like, wow, what the hell's going on? I'm just, you know, I just didn't know what was was. Yeah, it was all a bit. Um, yeah, it was kind of yeah, kind of a bit <laughs> quite 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 a strange experience. But um, how yeah, was the no, food? How mentioned the food was all vegan. How was the food served? Up? Where where did you eat? Could, you couldn't talk during meals. Who who served you food? So it was yeah. So it was vegetarian, not 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 necessarily vegan. Um, so the the food, I mean, it was basic. It was basic, but it was really it was really good. Um, I was that was one thing I was a bit concerned about before I went, but I was pleasantly surprised at the you know the the standard of the food. I mean, as I say, it was not you know we're not talking gourmet, but it was you know it was much better than I expected. Um, yeah, you kind of you all sat opposite each other. You know, you literally you know facing each other within a few inches but you know it's you know the whole no communication thing it feels kind of you kind of get used to it but the first few days it's a bit weird you know you kind of because you, you you're obviously conditioned okay. we well, conditioned obviously normally to sort of you know acknowledge people say hi at least you know you don't just sit next to someone and just ignore them not sorry rob i said not anymore well, yeah, yeah. Well, as you say, go back to your point. Yeah, it's good, good, good practice. But yeah, so that 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 was that was kind of very strange trying to get used to that. You know, after a few days, you sort of just get used to blanking everyone and you know just looking down at the floor and whatever else. But um, yeah, um, yeah, the, the 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 food situation was yeah, it was you just kind of queue up in a queue up outside the hall. You know, you collect your food and kind of sit down and just sort of yeah, as I say, stare at your plate and. You know, it was, I must admit, one of the, you know, I used to love, it's going to sound kind of, kind of a bit odd, but I used to love looking at the food and just the, the complexities, you know, the, in the, the oil in the soup and just looking at the patterns and things like that, you know, it was. They put LSD in the food and that, that explains everything. <laughs> yeah, probably. yeah, I mean, yeah, it wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me, but yeah, it was just, I suppose the simple things, because you're so, um, you know, you, you've got, you can't bring any kind of, any kind of entertainment in there. There's no writing, there's no music, there's no nothing. So it, it makes you, 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 you become more attuned to the simple things, you know, and that, 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 I think that was probably one of the, actually the good things that came out of it, just appreciating, appreciating things like that, you know, it's, it sounds silly, but, you know, we're, we're so surrounded by stimulation these days that, you know, and, and one of the great things of the, of the site was it was in the middle of the countryside and we were quite lucky with the weather um we had really clear nights and they've got a little clearing out the back where the meditation hall is and on an evening after the after the sittings I used to love just going to walk, walk into the field and just looking at the you know just staring at the stars you could just you know it was like a blanket of blanket of you know you know a blanket of stars and just staring at the sky for you know well it wasn't long yeah. because you don't get that long reconnecting between. with the <clears throat> we've lost our connection by to a large extent by paving over the earth and we've lost our connection with the cosmos by filling it full of uh light pollution and in, in in a lot of places on earth so how much time did you spend outside because it, I, I it sounds like a, a great way difficult way in, in a lot of ways but a great way just to just to declutter your mind like sending it to sending a laptop to the repair service and you get it back and it's it's just all it's all been processed do you know what i mean it's all been not necessarily got rid of but it's all been addressed or looked at and it's it's been like it's been more it's been made more efficient maybe <clears throat> uh, do you know what i'm getting at yeah well i think i mean that, that you, you you you're definitely your mind's a lot more attuned i think after after that you know you you, you um it is a bit of a, a a kind of a reset and i think i mean one thing i noticed was well, uh, I'm I'm not I'm not really um I'm not kind of into sort of social media and that kind of thing but you know obviously I've got a smartphone like everyone else and you know being away from that for 10 days and then coming back to yeah. it the first few days after it was it was it was really weird you know I, I felt those kind of those sharp pains of kind of connection to the phone you know you know like oh you got yeah. you know it's someone calling you know that being away from that for 10 days I think it made me realise. I mean, I've never, I've always been a bit sceptical on the hot, on all social media and those things. I don't think they're very healthy, but that that was a stark reminder of how how much subconsciously those things are attached to our minds and we don't know it. Um, so, yeah, but I yeah, you, I interviewed Jack. Sorry, did I tell you I interviewed Jack? 
Yes, yes, yeah, I've seen it. I've seen your um, yeah, I've seen your interview. Yeah, no, it's very good. Okay, just uh, just people who don't know, Jack um turned down an offer um, from MIT in nuclear engineering when he was twenty six to pursue a direct quote psychological well being. Um, and I was uh, I was saying on that how I had the same thing actually. My phone broke for like ten, I think it was about ten days, and I've had it then. And also, the friend I'm saying with here has got the the horses. I think I was telling you about them. And there's just nothing around. And you literally feel, it's almost like, um, it's like 10, imagine 10 fingers, but instead of fingers, you've got whips, like the one that wraps around Gandalf's ankle and pulls them down. Like weird uh, electrical, mag you know, like penetrating uh, yeah. threads. And in, in through your brain, right? And Instagram is one of those, and Google's one of those, and Facebook is one of those, and T Tumblr's one of those, and Twitter's one of those, and SoundCloud is one of those, and on and on it goes. And you've got those, even when you're not around them, you've got mm -hmm. the residue of them. Um, so I, I realized the other day, or t today, that you've actually got the world's information on, e on each of those platforms running through your brain for mm -hmm. all the time. And that um, is such a, a new state of affairs for us in terms of an evolutionary um, setup. That yeah. is, um, what, yeah. do you, what do you think the, the effect of all that information is? Well, yeah, as you say, I mean, we've not, yeah, we've just not evolved to be connected to so many, so many people, you know, like, you know, we're used to just a handful of people that we know, and that's kind of, that, that was it really, you know, as you say, we've kind of got the information of the world, we've got, you know, thousands of people, you know, kind of, well, well you know, it's, you know, yeah, I, I think it's, it's such a new thing, as you say, I, I just don't, I don't think we're fully aware of the implications of, of it. And I, right. I think, I think it's going to be something, you know, that, you know, maybe in a few, gener in a generation's time, I, I, th I think we're becoming more aware of it now. I think in fairness, you see things in schools, you know, banning kids, you know, on phones. And I, and I think that's definitely the right way to go. Um, but yeah, I think um, you know, I, th I think it, it it is definitely um, yeah. There's there's definitely that it, it gets everyone. I think as I say, I'm not one of these people that posts anything on social media, but I just you know I still felt those as you put it, those kind of tentacles that are kind of plugged in. It's like the Matrix, you know. You've got them in your you know, and you don't you don't know it. And um, and I, I, I mean, I hear about. I think it's kind of a bit of a hip. Like it seems to be quite a common or like a bit of a sort of a trendy thing now. The whole um dopamine detox thing i've seen things online recently you know it seems to be sort of quite a buzz a buzz term but i think that you know there probably is a lot of that that overstimulation of you know just you know of getting likes of just you know you, you look on tv and there's like you know you go on netflix yeah. you know amazon prime you've got millions of things to do you know it's not just about the connections it's just there's just so much stuff going on you know and i don't think our minds were, were have evolved to have so much choice yeah, yeah. I, I, I was saying to someone the other day how coming off this valley, and obviously I've got a very, very strong pull towards Valium, but I think my, the pull to the phone is currently stronger because I'm, mm. I'm, I'm going through an obsessive YouTube phase, as you probably noticed, and um, it's, it's amazingly strong because it's all from one object. Um, uh, the, the, it's like the generator for your life. Is that everyone you know is in there? All the music, all you know, everything. Everyone you know, everything you know. All the music. Uh, if you if you'd lost it or turned it off and explained for four days and didn't say anything on social media, you probably about twenty people would fall out with you. A few people might call the police. Um, yeah. It's amazing. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, I, supp I suppose with the phone, it's more of a direct connection. It's more that you know the ego kind of sees it. You know, it's whereas you're not just consuming kind of anonymous media, if you like. You know, just going on Netflix or whatever. So I suppose that phone is the it's it, it's the ego's connection to the rest of the world. I guess well, maybe maybe that's that's what that's it is. Um, yeah, and and in a place, yeah, and 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 people who have reported on psychedelics or or you're in a meditation retreat, um, you can be free of that. So what was the what was the best effect of the of the retreat? Um, I I suppose for me I think it was um, I mean I, I I I didn't I didn't get any you know massive revelations it didn't transform my life you know so I'm not I'm not going to sort of lie and say that it was that transformative yeah. but I think for me I think it was just a window of of what meditation can do to help to you know to 
uh, you know, to to calm the mind. To it was because I dabbled in it, but I'd not taken it that seriously. And I think that just just that 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 dedication to it for ten days just actually made me realise what what it could do. You know, it's it's you know you, you can read books and you know hear talks on people saying meditation is great. You know, it's really you know does wondrous things. Yeah. But until you've experienced that, I think. Um, you know, you kind of take it on face value, but for me, you, think... um, imagine that there shouldn't be because this is a over eighteen channel now. YouTube recently asked people, ask all uh, creators to two bo- two options for kids, not for kids. This is not for kids. Just to uh, clarify, I've talked openly already now about me being sacked from my old job as a teacher because of this channel, even though I had sort of a stitch up because it was after I'd reported someone for being um, racially abusive. And, and much more than that to a to a kid, a, te- a teacher doing that, uh, doing that to a kid. Uh, uh, that made me, I felt a little bit of indignation and anger there, and that made me lose my tra- tra- train of thought. Can you remember what I started with? <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, I'm, 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 yeah, sorry, mate, I'm, I missed, I missed, I missed a bit. That is all a bit, um, yeah, all a bit, um, yeah, all a bit, yeah, screwed up. What's um. I think we oh, were, I so you, you, talk, you talk about the best best effect, and uh, I think I was kind of talking about the, um, you know, just the window that it showed me into meditation and the, the benefits of of meditation. I think. Um, oh, yeah, that was it. Okay, so imagine that there shouldn't be any kids watching this, but imagine you've got like a ten year old watching this. What do you do when you meditate? So, well, I mean, meditation is a <clears throat> is a blanket term, I guess. Um, I'll kind of briefly mention the sort of meditation we did at the true retreat I went to. So the first three days, um, we it was um, a form of meditation called Anapana, which is effectively just observing the breath um, and a very specific point um, just below the nostrils. So you effectively just all you're doing is observing that. So you're doing that for sort of three, the first three or four days, 12 hours a day. You're just observing wow observing that and it's really the idea is to kind of sharpen the mind i guess really you know sharpen the senses so that you're that you're um yeah you're kind of more attuned to to the to the body and whatever um so that that that, that easy or just very difficult well it's in theory it's very easy but it's yeah you know your mind wanders it goes all over the place you know it's 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 not in practice it's not an easy thing to do not for that length of time anyway um but yeah, it, but it, yeah, in practice, it's it's very simple. That that certainly that aspect of it. Um, so that was the first three four days, and then after that, they introduced you to the technique of vipassana. Now, I mean, I'm not certainly not qualified to sort of teach it or whatever, but effectively, that's more of a kind of a body scan. Um, you know, observing each little part of the body, kind of individually, effectively. You just basically just yeah, ob- observing, observing the observing the, the, the body. Um, well it's more fit well it, it, i guess they start off sort of physically and then it goes into you know more of a yeah in a you know inside you know the, a, a kind of every aspect of your being i guess but um that's effectively what what the passioner is i think you know i think that's probably you know as i say i'm certainly not a um you know not qualified to to really you know talk you know to to to, to teach or anything like that but yeah it's effectively just a, a, a yeah you're scanning scanning every kind of atom of the body effectively that's the idea you know that's you know when you when you really become attuned that's sort of the ultimate ultimate goal that you can you're that focus you can that that attune that you can sort of hone in on every every molecule within the body that's sort of how they word it it kind of very useful because your 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 life is a hundred percent what you focused on do you know what i mean you could be you could be at the best party in the world and then you get a text from a partner or a relative saying, we need to talk. And all the emotions you have at a party of like excitement, opportunity, joy, drunk. For, you look at that phone, it's 100% anxiety. Oh, my God, what am I going to do? And you remove the phone again. And it's a mixture of the two, maybe. Um, mm. so, so it's, is it, is it, it's, the more we talk about it, the more that retreat sounds like what, sounds like sanity and the very very first thing we should be teaching children is to be aware of 
what's going on in themselves and to and to be able to accept and self-explore instead of instead of stuffing and overstuffing their heads full of uh you know facts most of which they're not going to use in real life you got any thoughts on that yeah, I think well, I think you've yeah, I think you've articulated it pretty well. It's yeah, it's effectively just being non-judgmental, really. You know, it's it's you know you're right. you, you're aware of everything, all your parts, everything going on, but it's 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 you're not reacting to it. That's the idea that you're you 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 accept it for what it is. You know, you're not yeah, yeah. The, you know the, the the physical pain. You know, you know you know in one way, it's pain is there for a reason, but in a lot of respects, it's more of a you know it's just. I think the way they describe it is kind of, you know, it's, uh, you know, you could almost analogous to, you know, um, mental, mental, mental kind of thoughts, negative thoughts that you have, you know, that's, that's, it's all linked. So that pain in your leg and you reacting to that, that is the same as, yeah. you know, you drive in your car and someone cuts you up and you react and you're like, hey, you know, whatever. It's, 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 I, th- I think, as I understand it, as I certainly, that's how I interpreted it, you know, you're kind of, you know, you're, you're using the body physically, but it's it's you can relate that to you know your 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 everyday you know everyday thoughts reacting reacting to you know in a positive and a negative way not just as I say not just right. sort of in a negative way but oh you know seeing something oh I want it I want that you know you know or getting a like on Facebook and going oh you know that's great you know it's it, it's sort of trying to not not do you not 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 turn you into kind of a zombie where you have no you know you have no emotions but just to not not be so reactive to these things. You're watching it. You're not swept up in it. Exactly. Yeah, I think that's a good. Yeah, exactly. That's a good, good way of good way of describing it. Okay. Well, Ian, it's it's been great. It's been great talking to you. Um, I'd I'd like you to come on again sometime. Thank thanks for thanks for coming on my channel. Um, guys, I'm I'm sure you you found that interesting. If you're either if you're someone thinking about going to do meditation, or you you. You, you, someone who might be, you know, a very intelligent mechanical engineer or, or some kind of job like that, and you think, oh, that hippie stuff isn't for me. Um, here you have, here you have a hippie, someone who was brutally hippified by um, <laughs> by some well-meaning Buddhists in a in a ten-day retreat. Actually, some Leonard Cohen ly- lyrics, because he was a Buddhist monk for a long time, and then had to come out of out of retirement back into his work to because um, his manager stole all his money. And he, but he enjoyed touring and did it till pretty much the end. Um, he said, um, I'm living in this temple where they tell you what to do. I'm older and I've got to settle on a different point of view. And uh, another one was, um, I thought I just thought this was brilliant. Like it's, in terms of the ego, just getting rid of the ego, which is what it's all about and, and serving humanity, say. He has this line that goes, um, you who wish to conquer pain, you must learn to serve me well. Well, I think that's that's a great way to uh, great great way yeah. to, to, to 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 finish things off. I think Rob, that's yeah. I think I could beat that. So no, you know, it's been serving by, serving by um, commenting on how on how well um, articulately he described that um, retreat and having the bravery to come on because a lot um, some people have said they come on and, and then change their minds. And um, do you have you got anything in the public domain that you want to? plug or flog or recommend um I, i'll be honest not at the moment not at the moment no i'm um yeah no i'm uh, as i say i'm i'm pretty yeah i'm not really on you know the 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 social media you know kind of i'm yeah nothing not, nothing not, no projects at the moment but um yeah i'm sure if something comes up i'll be yeah yeah be very much like to <laughs> like to plug it but no for, for me no that's there's nothing nothing okay. nothing else thanks for you just 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 this channel absolutely mate absolutely all right man well i'm gonna just i'm gonna hum something until this stops recording so it might take a few seconds and it'll make us look uh, more professional and less less awkward a bit like a closing theme tune in a soap opera <laughs> da, 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 da.